Hi my muddy people, I'm Nat at Mud Magic. Thank you for joining me again. Um, so today so I've had a few people ask me uh, how I do my flop bowls. So I'm doing one of my large flop bowls. This is two kilos of clay. So I've, obviously I've pulled the walls up and everything. So I just want to show you the flop part of it. So you have to do it on a bat, obviously. Um, the reason I'm doing another throwing video is because my bisque has just finished, so I'm waiting for it to cool down. So tonight I'll sand and wash it and then I will glaze everything tomorrow and then hopefully do a, a kiln unloading on Wednesday when Chase is up again. So there'll be a kiln unloading video coming soon, hopefully it'll be a good one. Uh, so I've already set up two dining room chairs back to back. Uh, so when you've, turn, when you've flopped it, you turn it over, shake it, let the ring do what it wants and then you put the back in between the backs of the two chairs or I've also got two card tables that I use sometimes. Anything that's on the same level that you can have a gap and you put the back in the middle and you let the bowl dry underneath. So all that I do when I get to this point, this is the scary part trying to flop it. So you wanna keep your walls still quite thick because you're gonna stretch this all the way out to flopping on the bat. Um, it's, you have to have thick walls because otherwise you're just gonna tear and I could do that today because they're not as thick as I normally would have them. So they get a really big straight rib, whatever you have, wooden, whatever. And then I start just pushing, trying to push it out straight. It's kind of jumping around on the inside. And again, I try not to rush the process because anything that you rush in pottery is usually going to end up a disaster. So I kind of do that, which also helps because you get all the slip off and you're compressing your walls as well. So that's all helping along the way. Try to keep the water out of the bottom as much as you can. I have left a fair bit of clay on the bottom of this one because I quite, I like, quite like when I trim these, putting them up on a pillar, kind of a foot or a tall foot. So I've left a fair bit of clay down the bottom. So you want to try and stretch it out. And because you're going to flop the rim, it doesn't matter as much that your rim is straight when you start this process because you're going to flop it anyway. And then when you tip it back over, it's going to be a um, it's going to be a floppy rim. <laughs> it's not going to be a straight rim. So it doesn't matter. Now the other good, the other thing I learned about this that I loved was how far I could push my clay. So if you haven't done anything like this, even if you do it on a smaller one with say a kilo of clay, because you want to keep the walls still thick, so you still need a bit of clay even for a small one. Uh, it'll it'll teach you a bit about your own clay that you're using. This is Keens Six White Clay. This Keens is probably one of the more popular clays to use in Australia or in New South Wales where I am anyway I'm not sure about the rest of Australia but definitely here but this is what always surprised me that I could get it to there I haven't dried it at all that's straight off throwing and it, gravity wouldn't take it but as I've said before my clay is quite firm so I love that I've actually left some like that because I couldn't bring myself to flop it any further but we will because that's the aim of the game for today so you just keep going Sometimes it doesn't even want to flop. I mean, uh, move my bowl a bit. Because you don't want to hit your bowl when you flop. That I've done that before. And there it goes. So, oh, it's still not quite. So it's flopped down now. So I've got a fair bit of a, a hump here. That's because, I, as I said before, I've left a fair bit of clay um, in there for me to do a nice big foot on. Now this is the hard part, is getting the getting it to flop back over because sometimes it's actually stuck to the bat when you try and flop it over. But uh, if you don't go, I've, sometimes I've gone, you can see I've still got a bit of space here to the edge of my bat. Sometimes I've actually gone um, too high and then when I've flopped it, it's been over the edge of the bat and then trying to get your, thing, your tool in to pick your bat up can be really hard. So now I may have jinxed myself because I said I've never had one fall off before when I do this, but you flop it over and see the rim flops back, give it a bit of a shake because you want it to be nice and, and down. 
and then I try not to touch it. I actually really like the shape that that's gone. You can't, I don't know what you can tell, but you'll see it eventually. Um, so yeah, I'm actually really happy with that one. That's quite pretty already. So I will dry that. As you can see, it's still stuck on the back. You can see how much of a foot I'm gonna have there. Nice big sort of pedestal that will be when it's flipped over. Um, you can take a screenshot and flip it over if you want, but I'm not flipping it back over. It'll just flop again. So I'll leave that until maybe like, what is it it's now? It's about four o'clock. So I'll probably leave that until 10 o'clock tonight. So maybe about six hours, even in the heat, just to dry, keep checking on it, make sure it's not a fallen puddle on the floor, which as I say, hasn't happened to me before, but see that bit's curled in a bit. I love that. I love all the different, when you flop it over, like when you flip it over and get to see it afterwards, it's really interesting to see. And the glaze plays really nicely on it. So that's it. Uh, I will show you obviously in one of my kiln unloads if it survives that far or how it's turned out. Thank you for watching. Stay muddy and have a magic.